Okay, so hi everyone. I'm Emily Marlton. I work in the study abroad office. I'm one of the program directors and I manage many of our programs in continental Europe, um, as well as some of our programs in Latin America. Um, but of course, today we are going to be focusing on study abroad, specifically for Germanic and Slavic languages. Um, a lot of the information that we'll cover is pretty generic and would apply to you know, study abroad um, anywhere and for any major, uh, but we do have a bit of information that's really specific to those of you who may be GSLL majors or minors or students just interested in Germanic and Slavic language. Um, so like I said, I'm Emily. I'm joined today by colleague Meredith Doubleday. She'll be introducing herself a little bit later and talking specifically about a program that you all might be interested in. Okay, so with that, I'll get started the presentation. So why should you study abroad um, as a Germanic and Slavic uh, major or minor? Um, well, you know, there's some general benefits to study abroad that would really benefit you no matter what you're studying at UNC. So, you know, in all cases, studying abroad allows you to gain real world experience and that can be tied to your career path. It can also benefit you academically or even personally. So, you know, you could develop cross-cultural competence um, and that's going to open up opportunities for you both personally, um, professionally, academically, you know, both in the short term and in the long term. And third, you'll be building skills and traits that employers are after. So things like curiosity, flexibility, confidence, problem solving. These are all things that you'll just naturally have practice with um, when you're studying abroad. And, and those things will set you up for success later. Um, and then also, of course, an obvious benefit is if you're studying a language, what better way to practice that language um, or you know, just become closer to fluent in that language than to immerse yourself in it. So by you know, practicing that language, being surrounded by it day in, day out, it's really gonna help you improve your language. Also being abroad and experiencing the culture, you know, will help you better understand the context that that, um, that, that language is spoken in. Um, you know, and the language and culture really go hand in hand and, you know, what better way to learn about it than to really be immersed in that um, for a full semester, a year, or a summer. So we're going to highlight just a few of the programs that uh, might be of interest to you. Of course, we have over 300 study abroad programs, so there's many more that might be of interest to you, but a few that we just wanted to highlight today that would be um, specific to your field of study. Um, so first, in the summer, this is a program that you can participate on next summer, in summer 22, you know, or future summer, depending on what year you are at UNC. So this is the Freie University of Berlin, and this is their International Summer University, or as we call it, the FUBIS program. Um, so that would be a summer program where you can take you know, language classes, culture classes, um, and like I said, as early as next summer. So I encourage you to check that out, especially if you're interested in German language and German culture. Okay, and these are a few examples of semester programs that could be of interest to you. First, we have the program in Croatia. This is through our study abroad partner, API. So this is a semester program for you in Croatia with a lot of support provided by our partner, API. So there would be other students from US institutions who would be participating on this program as well. So it's a good mix of immersion into the language and culture there, but also with support from our provider, um, as well as the comfort of having some other, you know, American students alongside you. Um, another example of a semester program is an exchange program at the University of Tübingen, also in Germany. Um, so the University of Tübingen is one of UNC's strategic partners. So in addition to exchanging students um, for study abroad, we have a lot more going on between UNC and University of Tübingen. So there's um, research initiatives and other collaboration. So really close ties between UNC and University of Tübingen. 
But for you all as students, what you need to know is that you can study at the University of Tübingen for a semester or for a full academic year. Um, and you can take courses. Many will be taught in German, of course, but they do offer um, a select number of courses taught in English. And this could really be a great opportunity regardless of your, um, of your major. Uh, because you could take not only the German language classes, but also, um, you know, content courses. So, you know, you can take a history course or a science course, um, you know, some taught in English, some taught in German. The great thing about exchange programs like this one with the University of Tübingen is that you can uh, cover the academic cost by paying your regular UNC tuition and fees. Um, so it's quite affordable. The, the cost would be very similar to the cost of a semester at UNC. Um, of course, there's things like airfare and other things that you'd have to pay for, but generally speaking, the cost of an exchange program like University of Tübingen would be similar to the cost of a program, um, or I'm sorry, similar to the cost of your semester at UNC. Okay, um, and then a third program that um, my colleague Meredith will speak to for, uh, later in the presentation is that about the uh, the Russian flagship program. So she will talk about that in a, in a moment. Um, but first, I'm going to share just some more general information with you um, about study abroad. I'm going to pause right here. Um, I see that someone has mentioned that the uh, link to the romance studies uh, session is not working. Um, I'm sorry, unfortunately, I don't have that link with me here. So um, uh, may, you know, maybe log out and try that again. You can also call our office. I'll pop the number in the chat here. Okay. All right, so moving on to academics and credit. So while you're abroad, you can earn um, pretty much any kind of credit. So you can earn credit to count towards um, elective hours and just general hours towards graduation. Um, you can earn general education credit as well. So you can satisfy gen eds while you're abroad. Um, I should say all of our study abroad programs automatically satisfy the EE credit. So experiential education, you will earn that automatically by participating on any of our study abroad programs. You can also earn credit towards your major or minor or language requirements. Um, those do require departmental approval, but that's a simple process that, that we will walk you through um, as part of the application process for a program. Um, we do encourage you to meet with an academic advisor before you are applying to study abroad. That way you can really talk about your unique you know, academic plans, your degree requirements, um, and talk about how study abroad can fit into your four years at UNC Chapel Hill. Um, so a little bit more about how you can earn credit toward your degree. Um, first on our website, we have a list of pre-approved courses. So a great thing is to check there first. Do keep in mind that just because a course isn't listed there doesn't mean you can't take it. We're slowly building this database of courses. So you know, it's just a, a sampling of courses that you can take abroad and earn credit at UNC. But these have been pre-approved. Um, you know, if a course is not on that list, that's fine. You can submit it for approval. Like I said, simple process. Um, what we do encourage you to do as you're researching programs is, you know, research the course and credit information for that program. We want to make sure that not only is the location, the program, of interest to you, but that it's going to be a good academic fit for you. So you can look at the course catalogs of the program that you're interested in. Uh, make sure you're paying attention to any course prerequisites. Um, and you can often review, you know, course descriptions or maybe even syllabi for the courses abroad, just to make sure it's a good academic fit for you. Um, we do have an academics abroad section on our website, lots of information and tools to help you re research the courses abroad. Um, and how those could transfer to UNC and what kinds of credit you would earn. And you'll see these are links, like I said, we'll be making these presentations available on the Study Abroad Week website so that you can go back and, and use these as, as links. But you can also find this information from our homepage. 
Okay, now just a bit about um, program cost. So if you're using financial aid here at UNC for this semester, whether that be scholarships, grants, or loans, that can usually be applied to your study abroad semester as well. Um, it's a pretty seamless process. We've got um, a colleague here, Sharon Beers. She's the assistant director for financial aid for study abroad. She's here to help you um, as you're researching study abroad and planning for study abroad. So she's um, based both in our office and in the off Office of Scholarships and Student Aid. And she can provide you with an estimated financial package so that you can prepare financially for the program. So you can just email her um, with the program that you're considering and she can talk to you about what your financial aid would look like for that program. Okay, so how to apply. Oops, here we go. So these are some suggested things that you can do um, to prepare for applying for a program and then to start an application. So first you can attend a study abroad 101 session. Well, a lot of what we cover in a 101 are things I'm going over today. But if you wanna dig a little deeper into some of the topics I'm talking about, you can go to our website and review some of the study abroad 101 um, recorded videos. So you can look at things like um, funding study abroad in more detail or things like program types. Like if you want to um, know more about what's an exchange program or what's a faculty led program. All that information is available to you at any time. You can review those 101 videos um, on your own time. Um, then, like we said, research the different programs. So we've got over 300 study abroad programs. So it takes some time to play on our website, look at the different programs, start with those highlighted programs I mentioned earlier, and then look at what kinds of credit you could earn on each. Um, once you've narrowed down your, your programs that you're interested in, if you want more details about those or want to talk things through with someone, you can meet with one of our study abroad advisors. Um, right now we're handling all of our study abroad advising appointments virtually. So you can connect with one of our advisors via Zoom. Um, then make sure you complete a Heels Abroad application. So all of our programs do have an application um, tied to them. So submit an application. Um, applications for uh, summer and fall just opened yesterday. So if you're considering studying abroad in, in summer or fall, now's a great time to go ahead and start that application. Um, in some cases, there might also be a host institution application just depending on the program. So there might be that extra step required. Um, once you've submitted your application, we've reviewed it and accepted you, then you'll have um, a window of time to sign the study abroad contract to commit to the program. And then we'll hold a pre-departure orientation where we'll help you prepare for your summer or semester abroad. So what all is on the study abroad application? Um, well, we've got the uh, programs that are led by UNC, like a faculty-led study abroad program, the only application requirement would be that in um, the UNC study abroad portal, Hills Abroad. Um, but if you're studying abroad in one of our partner programs, like the ones that I highlighted earlier, you would apply both to the UNC study abroad office and to the host. Almost all of our applications require a transcript, a series of short answer questions, an application fee, and then a few disclaimers and waivers that you'll read through and sign. Everything's online. Okay, like I said, we are um, now accepting applications for our summer and fall 22 program. So those applications opened yesterday. Um, the last deadline will be on February 10th. We do have a few programs that have an earlier deadline, so make sure you're paying attention to that. Um, if you're interested in going abroad in the spring, of 23, those applications will open over the summer and those will be mostly due on September 10th of next year. Okay, and keep in mind, you can only apply to one program at a time per term. If you apply for that program and you're not accepted, we can help you switch your application to another program, no problem. Um, and keep in mind also, applying to a program is not the same as committing to the program. So. You know, just because you apply to the program doesn't mean that you're committed to participating. You'll have time after you've been accepted to make that decision. 
Okay, so if you haven't already, make sure you check out our website, studyabroad.unc.edu. We've got tons of information out there, lots of resources on academics. Um, you can find the study abroad advising team and see how to connect with them. Lots of information about scholarships, financial aid. We also have resources out there for parents and family members. So if you've got um, family who want to know more about study abroad, you can point them to those resources. And then from our website, you'll link out to the Heels Abroad portal. That's where you'll actually see program information and that's where you'll start an application. Um, so you can play around with our program search tool. That's gonna to allow you to search for programs. And then, like I said, once you narrow down your program selection, click apply now on that program and you can start an application. So this is what our search page looks like. So you can search if you know part of the program name, you can put that here. Or if you wanna search by city or country or region, if you want to study by program type, or I'm sorry, if you want to search by program type, or maybe program features, like maybe you want to do a program that has an internship or, or research, or you know you want to participate on an exchange program. So um, lots of search parameters here that you can play around with. Okay, so just a note about health and safety. Um, of course, we are still navigating the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, both here and abroad, of course. So there's definitely some special considerations to take into account when traveling and studying abroad during the COVID-19 pandemic. So we've changed some things um, in, in our office. So, um, you know, for example, we've um, started offering virtual programs. So for students who are not comfortable traveling um, or who cannot travel to a country that they're interested in, you can perhaps participate on a virtual program. Um, we've also put in place additional risk assessment procedures. So, you know, we're constantly monitoring the, um, the COVID-19 situation in all of the countries where we have study abroad programs, looking at their um, COVID case numbers, vaccination rates, entry requirements, and then also what kind of local restrictions they might have too. Um, and then we, you know, thoroughly prepare students for studying abroad um, with additional you know, COVID-19 considerations. And then we've also had to make some changes to some of our programs, um, you know, whether if, if a program can't happen because students can't get into that country um, or, or if they can get into the country, but there's going to be some restrictions on site. Um, we've made some changes or just to add additional health and safety measures to our programs. There's been some changes. Okay, and we ask that you please stay in touch. So, if, you know, if you want more information about studying abroad, you can sign up to receive our monthly newsletter. Um, there's a place on our website where you can sign up for that newsletter. Um, we encourage you to follow us on Instagram and Facebook too. We announce our upcoming information sessions there. We also do student spotlights. Occasionally we have um, students who are abroad do an Instagram takeover. Uh, so it's fun to, to see what some of your peers are up to um, while they're studying abroad. Also on our website, we have our FAQs and other updates. Like I said, we are making modifications to some of our programs. One part of that is that we're offering a somewhat smaller portfolio of programs for summer and fall of next year. So you can check our homepage for the FAQs and for a list of countries and programs that are being offered for summer and fall. Okay, so with that, before we open it up for questions, I'm actually gonna turn things over to uh, Meredith to share about the um, Russian flagship program. Thank you so much, Emily. Um, now, before I start, please tell me if you can see my screen because sometimes I start and no one tells me. Okay, phenomenal. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for letting me um, Zoom bomb this presentation and share some information about the Russian flagship program with you. This is a program 
that is designed for students of all majors. So you might be studying Russian or German and that's why you're here, but you don't need to be a Russian major in order to participate in this program, which I think I really like to highlight that at the beginning. Um, if you take a look, if we think about this as International Education Week and everything that Emily talked about, about the importance of intercultural competency and developing those such vital skills that the 21st century employer we have evidence is looking for. If you take a look at the bottom right hand corner, the slogan of the language flagship program is creating global professionals. And through this program, you will become just that. Um, the language flagship initiative is a federally funded initiative to help US college students reach professional levels of proficiency in Russian language because it's a language critical to national security. Probably no surprise, right? So last year, UNC Chapel Hill competed for and won the ability to become the eighth Russian flagship in the, pro in the US. So the fact that I can even give this presentation to you as a Carolina student means that you are in already a privileged position because you're at one of the eight schools where this program exists. This is also the only language flagship program in the state of North Carolina. So outside of Russian, there are programs for other critical languages such as Portuguese, Arabic, Mandarin, but this is the only one right now in the state of North Carolina. Like I mentioned, the goal of this program is to help students major in whatever it is they want or double or triple major, you people exhaust me, while achieving working towards a professional level of proficiency in Russian language. So beyond an advanced level, beyond a level that you would get as just a Russian major. I say this as a former Russian major. This level of proficiency would allow you to study Russian to the degree that you can use it in your work or graduate school experience. And I'm gonna talk more about that in a bit. What are the program requirements? So the reason that this fits in so beautifully with Emily's presentation from Study Abroad is that this program combines both coursework here at Carolina as well as multiple study and internship abroad experiences. So the first requirement of the program is four years or the equivalent of four years. So we have some students who come in already with some Russian experience from high school or they're heritage learners. We have some students who find us as sophomores and they think that they can't uh, participate, but we do have intensive summer coursework to help students catch up to where they need to be. This is why we put in parentheses or their intensive equivalent. In addition to four years of Russian language study, so one class a semester, you would also do a summer study abroad in a Russian speaking country. And these would be through the study abroad office. So you would be applying just as a UNC student, but with the stamp of the Russian flagship program and some funding associated that I'll talk about in a second. This will be your first chance to have a fully immersive environment experience. You'd be living with a Russian host family for the first time. Russian speaking country means just that. There's Russia, Kazakhstan, Latvia, Kyrgyzstan, Georgia. Depending on your needs and your background, there are many different programs that you can look into. All of this, so your coursework at Carolina, as well as your summer study abroad, prepares you to apply for our capstone year, the crowning achievement of this program, which is a full academic year in Almaty, Kazakhstan. This is big Almaty, like I'd like to put in some fun visuals. And this is just to highlight the incredible beauty of Kazakhstan. It actually, Almaty is a huge city. It is, Kazakhstan is trying to brand itself as the leader of Central Asia, an area of the world that China and the US are both very focused on right now. But I do want to highlight its incredible beauty. What would you be doing on this capstone year? So you would continue taking advanced Russian coursework with the students from those other seven flagships. So UCLA, Bryn Mawr, Wisconsin-Madison, those other language nerds that you'd be in the trenches with, right? You would also take courses in your major. So say you're a history major, biology major, you would take a course in Russian at the local university in history, for example, with other local and international students. And this gives you really both 
sides of the educational experience and the chance to see how your subject matter is taught abroad and your language level will be at that level to communicate, converse, and contribute in that course. You would also, for credit, complete a professional internship that is specifically tied to your academic interests and professional goals so that when you leave the program, you not only have this ridiculous level of proficiency in a critical language, this tangible skill, but you also have significant work experience to help launch you into your early career, into graduate school, law school, medical school, whatever's next for you. We have a list of what students have done in the past, but it's by no means limiting. So it's really an incredible opportunity to have a very tailored experience abroad. And of course, it comes with all of the perks of studying abroad for an academic year, a homestay with a Kazakh family, you'll do excursions, overnight trips, cultural events, everything that comes with uh, the ability to study abroad, but in a very highly tailored and specific environment. Access to funding. So like I hinted at, we do have some money, the best part. There is financial support for these summer overseas domestic and um, the capstone year that I mentioned, as long as you're in good standing with the program. You would also receive preferential consideration at the national level for these language scholarships, these government scholarships that are incredibly prestigious, incredibly hard to get. We have been told, and this makes sense, that the government wants to invest in you because they're already making that investment in you as a flagship student. So you kind of get a leg up in those processes um, for these super competitive scholarships like critical language scholarship that's due today, by the way, for anyone um, who is interested. Lastly, this is an affordable program. Uh, it is completely free if you are in ROTC through the ROTC flagship initiative and project global officer. So if you're interested in ROTC or that speaks to your background, then we definitely need to talk. It is a no brainer that you're in my program. My favorite thing about the flagship program is actually the community here on campus. So like I mentioned, you can major in anything and be in this program, which means that it's a very close knit, but very diverse community of, you know, like-minded people who are all achieving this one goal, but from very different points of view and different perspectives. So it's a great way to get to know your peers that you otherwise might not. We also have tutoring that's paid for, funded by the program to make sure that you're meeting those proficiency benchmarks. Um, we also have so many cultural events and excursions. We have a career nights. We've had ambassadors come speak. We just had a journalist who was at the Glasgow summit last night, um, zoom in from London. She's a Russian journalist. We have had um, military come speak. We've done cooking nights, movie nights, you name it, we've done it. We, we offer a lot of programming. We also advertise uh, ourselves as making sure that we advise you individually. Like I mentioned, there are specific program requirements, but they're vague, right? It's not a certain number of credits. We work with you to see how those flagship requirements can complement all the other things that you're interested in doing at your time at Carolina and not prohibit you from participating in anything you're interested in. We also have significant funding set aside for students to do research positions, to do internships. We've had students fly off just this past semester to Seattle to participate in conferences and language hackathons. There are a, there's a lot of money and professional development opportunities as part of this program, hailing back to that idea of creating global professionals, which is great because even though this is a federally funded initiative, it does not have a service requirement. So you are not required to work in the government after participating in the program. I highly recommend um, reaching out to me if you have questions. I also recommend following us on social media. Um, Instagram, especially for students is great because we have some Russian culture content on there in English as well as in Russian. We do some student takeovers. We make movie recommendations. Um, we do a Word Wednesday. We have a bunch of stuff on there that's for students, regardless of your knowledge of Russian. So that's a great way to start sort of getting to know us and what our program offers, as well as the ability to participate in some events and come on out and see if it's something you might be interested in. 
On our website, russian.unc.edu, there's a tab that says admissions, and we have an interest form that you can complete. You're not signing your life away to me by completing that form. It just gives me the chance to follow up with you and touch base and see if this is something you might be interested in. So I'll pause there and stop sharing my screen and see if there are any questions. Yes, and please feel free to just unmute yourself if you've got a question. We're a small group now, so feel free to just unmute yourself and, and shout out your question. I recognize some people in the audience, so you might have heard the, the jokes before. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm also gonna put in the chat our handle um, as well as our website. So if anyone has questions later, you're welcome to reach out. Thank you so much, Emily, for having me. Yeah, thanks, Meredith. I appreciate you coming. Oh, Colin, do you have a question? Yeah, I've got one. Um, so I was looking at that list of countries that are offering programs. Um, at Russia is the country that I'm interested in and it's not on there. Is that pretty definitive? Yes, yeah. The, the countries that where we're accepting applications for summer and fall, that's, that's a pretty final list. Um, we definitely will not be adding any more countries to that. There is a chance that some countries could be removed. Um, you'll see there's a note, you know, some countries right now still have closed borders. Um, we're hopeful that um, some programs will, re some countries will reopen their borders in time for summer and fall study abroad. Um, so that list will be reevaluated again, just to possibly remove countries, not adding them. Okay, any other questions? Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we appreciate your time and attention today. We hope you'll check out some more of our study abroad week sessions. Um, there's more I think going on right now at 4.30. Um, if not, then there's definitely some more tomorrow afternoon and, and then some special sessions on Friday um, relating to funding that you might wanna check out. So go back to the study abroad week website um, and find some more sessions to attend. Um, thanks again. Thank you.